Halo semuanya. Ini sekarang pagi. Jadi selamat pagi. Dan uh, selamat datang di saluran saya. Atau selamat datang di saluranku. Saluranku. Uh, mungkin itu benar tidak yakin. Uh, belajar tentang itu kemarin. Uh, penggunaan ku. Penggunaan ku. Um, uh, misalnya, itu milik saya. Atau, itu milik aku. Atau, itu milikku. Ku. Okay, so I, that's all I'm going to say in Indonesian. I had to learn five or six new words just to say all that. Or six or seven words. And I had to have something to say. I just get, I don't want to ramble like I did last time. I said like two things in the last video and I really did know more than that. Uh, there's a car coming by, so I'll let it pass. Uh, so anyway, I didn't really plan on the last video. I just kind of recorded. I actually knew how to say more than that, okay? So I'm going to catch you up uh, this week. It's been another week of studying Indonesian. And uh, I'll tell you where I'm at. I just finished Unit 6 of Penziler. I think last time I was done with Unit 4. And in Duolingo, I'm kind of midway through Unit 4, okay? So I've got quite a few more vocabulary words, a couple of little grammar topics that I've learned. Uh, so a couple of things here. I was just talking about the use of the word ku, or it's actually an affix, ku. Um, apparently you can add that to the end of a, a noun and you're basically saying it's yours. So like I mentioned in the last video, you can say saya for I or aku. Saya is more formal, aku is less formal. So if I'm saying something like um, roti saya, my bread, I can say roti aku, my bread. Depends on who I'm talking to. So aku is less formal. But really I can take ju just the ku part of aku and stick it to the end of roti, which is bread, and I should be able to say roti ku, my bread. Maybe I got the fastest on the wrong syllable there but you know rotiku itu rotiku that's my bread milik saya it's mine itu milik saya that's mine itu milik aku that's mine itu miliku that's mine it's an affix and apparently indonesia has a system of affixes uh but not talking about the affixes indonesian is kind of like a miracle language that you always looked for to learn Let's talk about this, all right? So I found out there's no plurals. There's no plurals, kind of like Japanese. I've studied Japanese before, so that was pretty cool. I like that. Uh, there's no noun cases. So coming from learning German where there's four cases, you know, no cases is great for me. There's no verb conjugation. Or how does that work? There's no conjugation of the verbs. <laughs> So it's like a miracle language. I mean, you always, I never knew there was a, well, I guess when I talk about verb conjugation, no verb conjugation, I think back to the language called lingua de planeta. You don't really conjugate the verbs. You just kind of put a word in front of the verb to indicate the tense of the verb. Um, so, and it doesn't matter who you're talking to, you, we, us, it's the same word. Uh, so kind of the same way in Indonesian, you just put a word in front of the verb to indicate the tense, like I did something yesterday or tomorrow, or I will do something, or I already did something, something like that. But even with all that easy stuff, I think there's another car. How you doing? They can't hear me, but I've said it anyway. Uh, I think that the hard part about Indonesian is going to be the affixes. Now, I learned Esperanto. I can speak Esperanto, and there's an affix system in Esperanto. Um, I'd say, I think probably you add affixes more to the end of the word, but there are some that you add to the beginning, some, some prefixes. Well, apparently in Indonesian, at least from what I've looked at so far, it's a lot more of a complex system. It seems like there's more affixes you can add. And uh, I think that's where it gets a little complicated for English speakers, from what I understand. But anyway, I kind of like uh, the fact that there's you know no plural, no verb conjugation, and no cases. That's fine by me so I've got some notes here to kind of talk about what I want to say this week instead of just going off the top of my head so I've learned a lot of new words uh, talking about you know where something's at so the word mana by itself means where but you say di mana 
to indicate like at where or in where, or if you're asking somebody, where do you want to eat? You say di mana. So di mana kamu makan. Where do you want to eat? Di mana kamu makan. Or if you're talking to a, a woman and you're being respectful, di mana ibu makan. See, Pimsleur is talking about ibu and bapak. Ibu for you when you're talking to a woman and bapak when you're talking to a man. Where Duolingo just uses kamu and the anda for you. But Pimsleurs, they usually, Pimsleur will teach the most formal way you can talk. But bapak, I think it's pretty normal. If I see a man and I want to say sir, I'll say pak for sir and bu for ma'am. So, permisi bu, excuse me ma'am. Permisi pak, excuse me sir. Uh, you wouldn't say permisi kamu. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I've learned about di mana, and then you can say uh, di sini or di sana, or like where is the restaurant? Di mana restaurant? Di sini, it's here, or di sana, it's there. Things like that. I've learned about uh, talking about when, now, or later. Kapan means when. Sekarang, which I just said at the beginning, means now. Nanti is later. So you can say Sekarang mau makan. When do you want to eat? Sekarang mau makan. Which, let's backtrack a little bit. You can also leave out the subject. I forgot to mention that. If it's clear who you're talking to, you don't have to say you or I or we. And I like that too, because that's kind of like Japanese. So you can leave that out. So I tried to do that at the beginning when I was talking in Indonesian. You can leave that subject out. But uh, Pimsleur are still teaching to use it every single time. And so is pretty much uh, uh, Duolingo. So, kapan ibu mau makan? When do you want to eat if I'm talking to a lady? So you can say sekarang now or nanti. Munkin nanti, maybe later. So I learned munkin. Uh, I learned sesuatu, which means something. Uh, ibu mau makan sesuatu? Do you want to eat something? Ibu mau minum sesuatu? Do you want to drink something? Juga. Also, too. Saya juga. Me too. You say, saya mau makan dan pulang juga. I want to eat and go home too. I think that's pretty much all I had written down except for um, the word ada. I learned about the word ada which is it's kind of weird for me. I'm still trying to really wrap my head around what it means. It means like am or there is, I think, or like you can say, I am at the bank. Saya ada di bank. Or just leave out saya. Ada di bank. I'm at the bank. Or ada ini. I'm here. Kamu ada di sekola. You are at school. So the ada or is something I'm kind of trying to figure out it seems a little confusing to me but so anyway the last thing I want to mention now this is really cool I got to reply to somebody in a comment on YouTube in Indonesian I have a woodworking channel here on YouTube where I make guitars I'll link to it in the description if you want to go check it out but on one of the videos somebody and I've gotten several comments in Indonesian before but I got one recently just now after since I started learning Indonesian and I I can pick out some of the words, but some of them I didn't know. So I had to translate it to English to, to find out what he was saying. But I decided, all right, I'm going to go ahead and reply in Indonesian. So <laughs> I had to look up a couple words in uh, in the dictionary to know what to say to him. But uh, I'll put my reply here on the screen. But there's probably some errors in there. If there are, you can go ahead and correct me if I said something wrong. But I thought it was really cool. I really enjoyed replying to him in Indonesian. Uh, I kind of left a question at the end, so maybe he'll reply back, and I can say something else. But uh, how how neat is that? You know, I'm learning Indonesian. I get a comment in Indonesian on my woodworking channel, and I'm able to reply in Indonesian. All right, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, I'm going to keep going, and I'll keep doing these updates for you while I'm learning Indonesian. Uh, I did watch a, uh, a YouTube series uh, by a guy named Ryan Hale on YouTube. He's got like three videos out where he went to Jakarta. Or Indonesia, and he spent a year learning uh, Indonesia, and he talked to a lot of people uh, in markets and stuff like that. Uh, so it's really interesting series. I'll link to his channel. Uh, the three videos there are pretty recent. You can scroll back. So it was really interesting to to watch him just a year in, be able to communicate with all these people. So uh, go ahead and watch those videos. I'll link those in the description. Uh, until then, 
I'll talk to you next time, all right? Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you. Bye.